fighting line for Maribel Crown Point. What's Crown Point like? Uh, Crown Point's more, it's a little bit of the nicer, up, more upscale, up and coming community, I guess you could call it. A lot of newer development there, but it, at the same time, there's an older town that's been there for a long time. Maryville was more of a just big suburban development, whereas Crown Point's been there for close to 100 years. Maryville was incorporated in 1971. this entrance at night or I forget. This is the main entrance to the government center. Um, on that side, over here is farther down is the jail. I went into the sheriff's department to talk to them once and I had uh, my first spray on, on my keys. Have you ever been here at night before? I mean here like this now. administration buildings. Um, up here, I think this is another administration building, and the third building down there is the jail. So the multi-tiered one is the jail? Yeah. This is pretty elaborate. Necessarily, but sometimes, yeah. Is that what you did in Chicago? Yes, to some extent. But I got to admit, there was a chilling effect when I was by myself. Yeah. On a camera. I didn't want to talk to them alone on camera. Uh, if you want to come out here sometime during the day, do it. I'll come with you. <laughs> yeah, that might be pretty cool. Is there a lot of traffic of uh, armed bureaucrats in and out of here? Yeah. This oh, is yeah. this is kind of the hub. There's a lot of people out here in the day. I'll give you a shot of the building there. It's a 
pretty Leviathan. Yeah, it's got that sort of what is it, the late seventies, early eighties architecture. Where yeah, it's kind of hideous in a way. Not just because it's a government center, but just the design. This is if you get arrested for, I think, anything, any felony that they bring you here. Well, you get arrested for anything. Well, I wasn't brought here. Well, yeah, because you were in Hammond City. But it's most of the cities and towns come here. Yeah, they'll just drop Unless you Unless they just book someone and release them. Yeah, the Hammond City has a jail. They won't keep you for more than, like two or three days. I think Elliot was in there for, didn't he get taken to county? Yeah. If they keep you for very long, I think they keep you there. This is the, oddly enough, the Times, one of the newspapers here has a building right across the street. We like to say that's the other government center. Media. When I was there, there was a guy who was arrested for having an unpaid traffic ticket in Lake Station. It was like a hundred and some dollars. That's ridiculous. They, he was picked up by the Dyer Police. Dyer Police? Yeah. Dyer is right on the border. It's in between Cherville and uh, Crown Point and Maryville. like a sub? Sub or sandwich place kind of thing? Uh, I know there's a place up here on the right that I've been to. I don't know what time they close. Uh, I know on Saturday nights they're open like just look down up here and take a walk. It's a little farther. As Papa John says it's open. Is that alright or is it for something better? I mean, it's not like a sub you want a sandwich or something. Yeah, well, I don't, I don't know if they're right here. Yeah, so I don't know if they're right here. Oh yeah, this is like a downtown sort of thing. Yeah, this is the square. Yeah, that place there. It's a little, no, that place is no. That was they, the place they got a few bars down here. Um, it's a square. It kind of moves in the counterclockwise manner. See, that's where the 
County Courthouse used to be. That's the old County Courthouse. And then they moved it over to that. Which they, funny thing was, they wanted to tear this down to put a parking lot there. Well, these good ones, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which, even though it's it was a courthouse that still is a very nice architecture building compared to a lot of stuff around here. Yeah, and I think uh, somebody got it turned into commercial retail. Do they have court there ever? I think they moved the uh, Crown Point court here. This is all a square here. Probably head north, right? Yeah. What do you think? You can go over here to the right first. I don't know, is anything out that way? Well, just for a minute. Okay. And then over here on the left, you can see where the old jail used to be a long time ago. Left, right up here, right? Yeah. And that is where John Dillinger escaped from the fake gun. Seen Public Enemy with Johnny Depp? Yes. Uh, they filmed that, a lot of this in the Crown Point Square. So this is a nicer neighborhood, or it's considered a nicer place? Yeah, it's an older area. Like a lot of it was built at the same time a lot of the houses in Glen Park and Gary were built. Mid 20s, some of it was built even before then. There's a lot of Victorian style houses. You know, this one's a historic residential district area. never really been a bad area. It's always been somewhat nice. At least for Indiana standards. You compare it to Evanston and Winnetka and other northern suburbs, it's like, it's not even close, but for around here, it's a bit nicer. Is this kind of how keen is in a way, I'd say? It's nowhere near as built up. I mean, maybe closer to the downtown, the houses would be this close together. Um, the houses close to downtown maybe be about this big with less yard space. A lot of the areas that people like to live are a little bit uh, more sparse. Yeah, I'd say it's just general in New Hampshire. I mean, Manchester's maybe the only place that's stripped down where the city is. Yeah. You don't have to so keep it to south. Maybe the seacoast as well. Much happens out here. I would guess that a lot of the ones around some parts of Keene are similar age. There's a lot of stuff that's older, but that's not the bulk of it. Some of this is a little bit newer out here. Yeah. Like closer to the square, it's a lot of the older houses. There aren't really 
really too many other cities uh, built up right around Keene, right? No, it's the largest city in the county, in the southwestern corner of the state. I mean city, it's, it's under 30,000. Uh, it's just called the city because the government called itself a city, not because it's population. I think the city also has to do with uh, a certain amount of urban density in an area, maybe. That's how they get away with calling it a city. Claim yeah. like close to downtown, they have X amount of density, that's their city. Well, as far as the government designation in Indiana, it's really, it's not so much the size, it's the, uh, just the way that they organize the municipal corporation. Because you look at Merrillville. It's actually a town, right? Yeah, it's the largest town in Indiana. And then you have Whiting, which is smaller. It's a city. Yeah. Okay, so it's a corporate thing. Yeah, it's more, I think, Merrill doesn't have an actual mayor. They've got maybe like a town board council head, or I, I don't know exactly how it's structured. Whereas Gary well, my has a mayor. Is the main difference is whether they have a mayor or not. Yeah. More of like a board or a mayor. They have a council in Merrillville. They don't have a mayor. So I think it's more of the executive branch. They kind of don't have exactly somebody acting like that. The other somewhat unknown, somewhat uh, hidden level of government uh, around here is township. They still have the township all set up, which this, I think this is, uh, this isn't Ross Township here, is it? I think it's center. Center. I'm not sure though. Um, but Gary Griffith and there's an unincorporated area of Calumet Township that comprises a lot of Northern County. And then there's North Township, which is closer to Chicago. But Calumet Township had the highest budget, I think, of any township in the state. And it was quite a bit more than like, the next largest township. Okay, so as far as towns went, it was the largest budget, but not necessarily the city. Well, the township is structured slightly differently. The township is... That was something done originally when the state was a lot more just farmland. It was kind of done because a lot of places didn't incorporate. Like, Merrillville has been... There's been a small settlement in Merrillville for... Since the 1900s, but it hasn't really been big enough to be incorporated. So it was part of Ross Township. And it was just an area of the county they called Ross Township. But when cities started incorporating, it kind of took over the purpose of the township. downtown in Gary? Yeah, we can take a ride through there. That's uh, it's a fun place this time of night. Ghetto. Oh yeah. A lot of it's, it was sort of built very similar to this, the construction, but a lot of the buildings have just been come, they've been left and they've become dilapidated and been torn down. Um, or some of just sitting neglected. Yeah. It's, have you ever seen the show, uh, I think it was on the History Channel, Life After People, or maybe it was Discovery. No, they filmed much, much quite a bit in Gary. You still want to get food somewhere? Yeah, that might be a good idea before we head down there. Well, uh, what are you thinking? Is, Shoops, Shoops isn't 24 hours. Steak and Shake is, though. You want a burger, or is that... 
burger sounds like maybe not a bad idea. If it's like not that corporate, not that GMO, you know, a little on the nicer side. Steak and shake's a little greasy. Greasy isn't necessarily bad unless it's like disgusting grease that just turns into a rock in your stomach. What do you think about steak and shake? Good or just something else up here. Probably something better. Yeah. It's just I think at this hour there's not a whole lot open. There's a few 24 hour places around the world. Yeah, I'd, love to, I'd like to try just new 24 hour food, I guess. It's a concept that I very much appreciate. Steak and Shake, I think, is they don't have them in. Northeast at all, or uh, it's more of a local restaurant chain. Yeah. I think there's a few out west. I think they're all over the Midwest. Yeah. They kind of fashion it like this '50s diner sort of thing, mm -hmm. like the decor and everything. One thing I had a hard trouble grasping was steak and lube. Are they, do they possess those around here? The yeah, Quaker there's one over Portage. Lube, there's, yeah, there's one right on the big one. Yeah, so that's a, a place where you get your car fixed and you get food. I don't see any sort of car fixing there. It's They have it set up to make it look like there's a restaurant inside of a place where there used to be a, a repair shop or gas station or something. Yeah, it's somewhat themed along that lines. Yeah, it is kind of a weird thing. Okay, so I got the impression there was actually a garage when I saw, and it was, I was like, that's kind of disturbing, and making food and, and fixing cars, and it's like, you know, they don't crap. It looks like that, yeah. Invincible. But the area that's a garage is more of their, uh, it's like a separate room where you could have that uh, reserved. That's a little more reassuring. <laughs> Does Gary have 24 hour food? There's Most even less stuff open in Gary. Uh, yeah, I think so. The yeah. things in Gary you can pretty much get are there's a Denny's at a truck stop that's 24 hours. There's um, another place over on the truck stop that has a 24 hour restaurant in it. Like, that's pretty much it. Hey, there's a lot of places where they don't even like to have 24-hour gas.